back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. You lost that love with me, but now it's gone. You know what? There's no end of breakup songs. No, there like, isn't. We could be here for weeks and we wouldn't go through all the we breakup would. songs. Uh, we are talking about family law on The Law Show. David Halkett is here, partner at Macquarie Hunter in Surrey, but servicing the whole greater Vancouver area. How many people come into your firm and have a skeleton kind of agreement in place when um, it comes to kids? Qu- quite a few. Um, a lot of people now are realizing that it's not really the best for their children to litigate and have a, a judge who doesn't know them deciding what's best for their children. There's only two people who really know what's best for their children, the parents, and for the most part. The two mother-in-laws. Come on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's that a good one. Um, but, you know, it, for the most part, people come in and they, they have an idea what's, what's happening, especially if they've been separated for a while. There's been a bit of a course of conduct as to where the children have been. And um, a lot of people don't want to litigate um, schedules. There, there's still, you know, maybe a quarter of my cases where there is litigation regarding schedules and, and custody and guardianship of the children. But a lot of people want to at least are, have the framework of how we're going to decide regarding the children together and then it, you work on the, on the schedule. How many divorces are nasty business around money, nasty business around he cheated, she cheated, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. When it comes to the kids, they're a little more civil. Um, Quite, quite a few. Um, I think because they, they may hate each other, but they both love their children. And, you know, even though I, I joked earlier in the, the show about how you're a great parent until you separated, then yeah. you throw mud at each other. Yeah. You know, for a lot of the people, it's like, it's our job as lawyers to tell them, look, you got to keep their best interests in mind. Even if you hate, you know, the, the, the other parent, they're still the person's parent. And they're always going to be in your life. Exactly. And as um, there's one master says, you're, a, you're, you're their parents so that put you in a box. You know, and you're always that parent. And the last thing you want is to go to their graduation, uh, for university, high school, go to the wedding and not be able to talk to the other Yeah, parent. no, that one. Yeah. That, I got that T-shirt. That, that, yeah. that happens a lot. I was at a wedding once and both sets of parents, uh, for both the bride and groom, had to sit at separate tables away from, their ex- from the other yep. parent. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting. You had one father and one mother at one table and one father and mother at the other table because they couldn't be at the same table. Well, that'd and, be ironic if they got married. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure it's yeah. happened. Yeah, oh, I'm I, sure. There's a good movie out there about that. So, so I think that that's, you know, a lot of people want to try and keep the kids as sheltered as possible. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of other options out there. Like, you know, we have networks of, of counselors through our office as well. We can refer them to is to help the parents get through it mm-hmm. because um, it's a lot easier to go to an actual you know, registered psychologist or a counselor to assist with, you know, the feelings you have about the divorce than telling us. At a higher rate. For exactly. Sure. So what kind of agreements are there around children? What are the, what are the sort of typical ones and what are the pitfalls uh, that you see? Well, you can, have, you can have agreements regarding, you know, what are the parental responsibilities? Under our Family Law Act, there's Section 41 lists a whole series of parental responsibilities, day-to-day decision-making, religious upbringing, uh, passports, uh, medical, etc. You can put an agreement who takes care of what or that both of us do. And what if we can't agree? You know, we, we both have the right equal de- decision making. What happens if we cannot agree on it? So you could say, okay, we, we can't agree, but if we don't agree, we'll go to mediation. And if we can't agree on that, we can go to court. Or you can say, if we, if we can't agree, one of us makes the decision, the other gets to go to court. Um, so, so that's kind of like suing after the fact. Exactly. Right? So, so say, for example, you want to um, put the child in a private school and you can't agree on the school. Maybe dad makes the decision, then mom gets to go to court and say, this is ridiculous. They've been public for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Why are you all of a sudden you putting them in a $30,000 a year and private I'm paying school? paying for half of it. Exactly. Right? Um, but one thing I have noticed uh, a trend in the last five to six years is parents don't disagree that much on most of the major issues regarding the children. They'll argue that, oh, I think the child's better with me, and which is often money issues tied into right. it. But for the most part, they're not going to disagree on a medical procedure. They're not going to disagree on what's best for the child education-wise. Uh, they're not going to disagree as to if the child has a disability, although that does arise sometimes that one thinks that the other parent is playing it up for whatever reason. You know, because uh, a lot of children now are, are labeled a lot in school and mm-hmm. one doesn't necessarily accept it and, and they argue over that. But usually 
they agree on the major issues. Um, the, sometimes it can be religious differences, like if one's a Jehovah's Witness and one isn't. And, I was going to say, do sometimes parents separate and then somebody changes their religion to spite the other one? Um, it, it can happen. And, and then that, they drag the children into that? Okay, we were Jehovah's Witnesses, now we're going to be Seventh-day Adventists or whatever it is, right? Yeah, and, you pick a religion, doesn't matter. And, and, it can, and it can, each one has uh, own little, you know... Idiosyncrasy. Uh, exactly. So, you know, the, the, if one's a Jehovah's Witness, one isn't, it can cause a problem medically. Sure. You know? uh, then usually what happens is you just simply would bring a court application, say the doctor recommends X, Y, and Z, and the court take, in effect takes over. They, they, it's an old Latin term called parents patriae, which means I have the right to be in effect your patron as a you know protect you as a as a child, and the court will take over, make the order, the surgery occurs, and the parents don't have a say. Hmm. Uh, but for the most part, people are agreeing on the major decisions regarding the children. Well, typically they were together initially because yeah. they had similar values. Right? Exactly. But what what's interesting is often the um, one parent never participated in a lot of the a lot of the medical issues or dental or whatever. And then once they separate, they want to be advised of every medical sure. procedure, every or every dental appointment, every medical, and they never cared when they were together. Like, I, I admit, in, in my own personal situation, I don't even know my son's dentist's name. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I don't even know necessarily my own doctor's name. <laughs> I just pull up my phone. So, so that's just when, the way it is. Uh, no, we talked about, you know, they have a framework and maybe yeah. they fight about the money and assets and all that kind of stuff, but they're a little bit more civil. On the flip side of that, there's a percentage of people that do all of their fighting through their children. Yep. You get that too. Yeah. And, and, and what do you say to them? Well, I tell them, look, you know, it's, it, you can't, your best interest is not necessarily the child's, you know, um, and I'll argue this in court that, yeah, he, he or she thinks that it's best that the child not do whatever activity. But the child wants to do the activity. Just because they may not be good at it doesn't mean they shouldn't do it. Um, and I'll tell them, look, you know, it, it's only hurting the child. The child's having, you know, sometimes they have to go to counseling because of they're caught between the two. They don't, they don't want to be picking one parent over the other. They love both parents equally. And so, you know, you have to remind them that they're, and we have obligations as lawyers under the act, but we just have to remind them that it's what's best for the children. Keep that in mind and don't. Don't fight your battles through the child. And do they listen? Usually they do, uh, but there's always some that you're never going to get through. Them. I'm sure one way of getting them to listen is saying, this is what I charge per hour. Yeah. If we f- want to go down this road, it's going to cost yeah. you this amount Well, that's of money. it, right? You know, and you know, often I have clients who want to be like, come in, I want really aggression. I want to be very aggressive. I want you to take the first step. We want to do all these kind of things. Then they get their first bill at the end of the month, and it's like, you know that you know, remember that retainer you gave me? Well, that's used that's up, being, and you owe me yeah. another X amount of dollars. Usually, they tend to want to step back, um, and and it's not that everything I've done has been a valid charge for them, except they don't realize how much things cost when you always have to be you know writing a five page letter when you don't really have to. And we talked about this in the last show, maybe in our two shows ago, about the cost of a divorce, yeah. and uh, we had some um, uh, bar association sort of averages, yeah. and you thought they were like. About fifty percent of the real price. Yeah, it, it can be. It, so it can you be are like. saying in British Columbia for an average divorce that you see it's over thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, if, if assuming there's any kind of litigation at all, oh yeah, for sure. If 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 it goes to a trial, um, you got to figure you know ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars per day of trial because that includes all the work you've done ahead of time and in interlocutory motions. So you know, it's just money that you're fighting over your own money. But there's more money at stake now. Yes. So people are willing to dig in because yeah. their house used to be worth 500000 Now it's worth a, a million. million and a half, yeah. right? And, and someone told me once <laughs> that the reason that family law litigation has remained as, as robust in BC as, as it was, this was like a number of years ago before the real spike in our prices, was our housing prices kept going up. They could, people could afford it because of the equity in their home. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it's caused a lot of divorces. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, they, they, they know that they can afford to get divorced. And then, of course, once you cross that Rubicon, you never know what's going to happen. It's in the great unknown. And sometimes you just lose control of the, of the case as, as, a, as the client. How many people try to put the genie back in the bottle? They go, ah, this was a big mistake. I, I still love you. Let's just forget that I ever tr- started this. <laughs> um, you know, I've had in my 20, 20 years of basically primarily family law, 
maybe two or three that that's happened. Really? So yeah. most people, when they get to your office, they kind of know. Yeah, it's pe- people don't come, as, as I always jokingly say when someone asks if people get divorced too easy, I said, they don't wake up at 9 o'clock and say, I'm calling Halky to get a divorce <laughs> on a Monday. You know, they, they've, it, they've thought of it sometimes for a year or so. It's harder sometimes than the person who has been told I'm leaving or I don't. Yes, because and they, they never saw it coming. Exactly. The Is other it person, usually the guy? Uh, no, no, it, it's often, it's, it, it's split. Really? Yeah. Uh, but you can have a situation where someone's, the women tend to think about it longer, mm-hmm. like a year and a half. Some of them, they may, may have mentally divorced two years earlier. Right. And you know that. Yeah. And when, and when, you, when you sit the, the guy or the guy and you say... You yeah, kinda, we haven't gotten along for the longest time. Yeah. yeah. Is this a surprise to you? Yeah. <laughs> most, most aren't, right? Yeah. Most aren't. And so when they come to your office, they, they want to put the wheels in motion. Yeah, they, they, they want to get the matter resolved and, and, um, and at least get on with their lives and, and see where, at least know where their rights are. Someone listening to this show, maybe it's not them, maybe it's a son or daughter, maybe it's a friend, and they want to, they know that they're thinking yep. about this. So they, they go to Macquarie.com, they, yep. they find you or uh, Leah or Sarah in the law mm-hmm. department there. And uh, what should they have with them when they come in to see you? Bring in a list of your assets, mm-hmm. your liabilities, uh, the children, list of any uh, disabilities that children may have, you know, either mental, physical, or whatever. Um, what your existing schedule is, what your debts are, and bring as much information as you can so they can get the advice at the time. And you have sort of a flat fee for that consult, For the right? first consult, yeah. It's, it's less than my hourly rate, mm-hmm. and they come in and they basically get as much time as they need to go over it. Usually because of my experience, I can deal with it in an hour, mm-hmm. but it's a flat rate, and um, there's no obligation. The, uh, they want to see the fit with you, right? Exactly, and, and part of the reason that we, do, we don't do the free consult is that I could technically be doing free consults all day. Uh, and so this, it, it, it's, a, it's a way that, that at least if they're getting the advice, you know that they're, they're going to get good advice. Like I do, yeah. we do other um, lawyer referrals for less, but for the most part, that's only through the CBA. It's a, it's a community service. Someone comes in, they pay a flat rate for me, and they get an hour of my time. Yeah, and you know what? That's what makes the wheels go around. Exactly. You, I mean, you don't work for free, right? Exactly. But uh, Not yeah. voluntarily anyway. Well, <laughs> except for your friends that come up yeah. to you on the yeah, hockey exactly. bench and say, David, yeah. by the way, exactly. I've been meaning to speak with you. Then they start the clock ticking. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, this is going to cost you a steak dinner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, David Halkett has been uh, my guest, uh, family law- lawyer at uh, Macquarie Hunter in Surrey, Surrey Central there, right on the SkyTrain line and right in the middle there. Uh, great destination basically for all of the great events. Vancouver area. Thank you for coming in. It's a very, it was a lot of fun going one on one this time. We'll get uh, Sarah and Leah back for future shows as well. That's all the time we have on the Family Law Show. I'm Zach Spencer. Speak to you next time on CL 650.